Hey guys, welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates III, and today's episode is Anchor and Analyze. This is something that is regularly thrown around, set the price anchor, anchor price zone. It's loosely thrown around when we're talking about negotiations with sellers and buyers, but mainly with motivated sellers. And I wanted to give my tips, my feedback, and how I utilize the anchor in negotiations with sellers. Now, one of the things that I am really big on is, is I want to very early on in the conversation, ask the seller, what is their asking price? This is my way of trying to get the anchor price out of the seller early on, right? I want to know where are they as far as pricing goes, So I can understand where I need to begin my negotiations, whether we're really far apart or whether we're really close to where my maximum allowable offer is, right? That is where I want to understand. So early on, if you see me on a live cold call or when I'm talking to a seller, whether it's an inbound or an outbound call, I'm gonna ask them two questions very early on. Are you looking to sell this property? If the answer is yes, then I continue the conversation. Then right out the gates, I want to know what is the asking price of that property, okay? Especially if if we're saying yes, they want to sell, I think it catches most sellers off guard to ask them that early on in the conversation, what is your price? Because typically what you're what you're finding out is in most sales training is that That's something that we're going to ask further along in the conversation. I want to be respectful of my time and I want to understand where are you at price wise so I can understand where to go with the rest of this conversation. If they're in the ballpark, now I could get a little bit more detailed about the property and and really try to see it where there's an area for me to negotiate to get them down to the price that I need to be or even below that. Now, if they're way outside of our MAO and and we're way far apart in negotiations, that's where I'll pull back, take away in the conversation and say, look, that's not where I'm going to be. I'm probably not going to be anywhere close to that, but I am going to be in this range. Should we even continue having this conversation or should I just move on? And this allows me to be respectful of my time as well as theirs. And there's no need to get into real lengthy negotiations if we know early on in the conversation that we're really far apart. Now, the opposite side of this is, is if you ask someone what their price is and they don't want to divulge that information to you and they say, look, I was really just looking to get an offer from you. That's where we can then ask some more information while we're analyzing the property. Now, the today's episode is called Anchor and Analyze. Okay, so I want to explain what I mean by that. What I'm saying is, is if we get to a point where we say, look, I'm probably going to be in the $75,000 to $80,000 range, I want to then stop what I'm saying and analyze the response to that. Is it silence? Is it an immediate pullback? Like that's not anywhere that I thought we were going to be. Or are they entertaining the idea? Do they want to continue having the conversation? Are they then going to turn around and hit you with a small counter offer, right? And during that, that's when I'm thinking about what is the next question that I'm going to ask based upon their response, okay? I want to really sit down and analyze, almost kind of putting myself in the shoes of if I was sitting in their living room, what is their body language? What's the facial expression that they're giving me right now when I said the actual dollar amount of seven? 75,000 or 80,000, right? This comes from doing many sales in person as well as just closing deals face to face. And a lot of that changed in 2020 with COVID. And now almost exclusively, we're doing virtual closings. So now I have to get really good about listening to what the seller's telling me with the response. So stop what you're doing and really pay attention and analyze what that response is. And again, think to yourself, 
when they come back, whatever it is that they're going to say, what is going to be the next question that I'm going to ask? And this goes back to what I said in the previous episode about uh, overcoming seller's objections. This is where you need to be locked and loaded with either an open-ended question or, or a closed question, okay? An open-ended question would continue the conversation and force them to divulge more, whereas a closed-ended question at this point would allow you to become the authority within the conversation, okay? So if they come back and they're extremely interested in the offer that you just threw out, that's where I recommend throwing out a closed-ended question to move the conversation down the path that you want, become the authority in the conversation, and then go in for the close, okay? Now, if they're pulling back, they're not happy with it, this is where you ask an open-ended question, allow them to, to explain their feelings, their emotions in regards to the offer that you just made them, where maybe then once they've given you that additional information that they just gave you, now you can circle back around and steer the conversation to where you need it to be and explain why your offer is where it is, okay? And this is one of the things that I think we sometimes forget about is that we need to explain our offer. Transparency with a seller is a benefit because so many people out there are not doing this. They're not explaining to them. Let me explain why. Steve Trang asked me in the interview that I did on Real Estate Disruptors that, RJ, did you think it was a mistake? Was it a mistake that you made that you actually shared what your exit strategy would be on the property? And I thought about it for a second because it caught me so off guard. But again, you have to think about, this is the competition that I'm going up against. And there's not a right or a wrong answer. It's just different ways of doing things. When Steve and, and Max and his team, when they go to talk to motivated sellers and they're closing, they really don't want to divulge their exit strategy. Whereas I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I'm using this to establish myself as an authority in the conversation. I'm also not having to become somebody else. I'm not having to worry about explaining what I'm doing in, in an awkward way. I can truly just sit there and be in my realm and explain honestly what my intentions are with the property, whether that be wholesaling, flipping it, renting it, Airbnb, seller financing, it doesn't matter. And this is what also enables you to have a very genuine conversation when it comes to some sort of creative financing, right? When I'm honest and I'm transparent with them, this will enable me to, to bring up subjects like subject to the existing mortgage or asking them if they're interested in becoming the bank and seller financing the property. Raw, authentic transparency in a conversation with a seller, you can't go wrong with that. And if you do, then it probably wasn't the right seller and right property for you. So again, this is anchor price, either allowing them to set the anchor early on when you ask them, hey, did you have an asking price? They set that anchor, right? That's them saying 100,000. In their mind, they know you're not gonna come back and say 105,000, okay? They pretty much know you're gonna be somewhere below 100,000. Same thing when we anchor price and we say 75,000, they know, I know, and they know that they have the ability to push me up from 75,000. That's why we're establishing this with the anchor price. When we get a number out of them, it's up to us to analyze based off of their body language, based off their response, the tempo, the tone, everything that goes into that is very important. And then your response to that is critical for the close. Understanding what questions, how to ask those questions and get the seller to talk more so you understand their situation. Because again, we're solving people's problems. We're not buying houses. And when you ask questions, that gives you all of the information. It puts together a full story for you to understand what problem it is that you're trying to solve and whether or not you're the right fit for that seller. And at that point in time, that to me 
is why Anchor and Analyze can make you a great closer. Hopefully this guy, this video helps you guys out. If you enjoyed it and you're listening, where you could give us a five-star review, please do so. Because remember, we only accept five-star reviews. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe and that notification bell so you get notified on all future videos. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.